our next guest you're going to love. He's Great Britain's biggest, funniest talk show host, won so many awards, been going one-on-one -on -one with the world's biggest stars for the last 20 years. Also found the time to write a new thriller. It's called, I mean, what is it called? It's called Keeper. <laughs> Bring Graham, Graham Norton out right now. Thank you very much. So I, I, I'm tempted just to give you the floor and take over. You kind of know how to do this. You want 20 years. I'm in a foreign land. Happy Labor Day. Happy do, Labor do Day. Do we yeah. say Happy Labor Day? Sure. Yeah, yeah. why not? Yeah. We will say Happy yeah. Labor Day. Merry Labor Day. I don't know. You really do have a special talent. You get all these big stars, but you get them to say things they don't necessarily, we're not necessarily expecting to hear. What's your secret? Um, well, you guys are at a disadvantage. Coffee will only open people up so much. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Their energy's up, but uh, the you know the, the the lips not so loose. Uh, we have you know a, a variety of beverages on, on offer, <laughs> and because we're in the we're in the evening, and often people partake, and that does help. That helps. But also, I think it helps because they're not just on the couch with me. You know, so like say someone like Kevin Costner was on and he has amazing stories, but I could instantly tell he doesn't really want to tell me those stories. <laughs> um, uh, but, but on his other side was Helen Mirren because she's on the couch um. at the same time. Well, he wants to tell Helen Mirren his <laughs> stories. So literally his back was to me the whole time, but we still got all the stories we wanted out of him. And I think that's one of the keys, is they're on the couch with their yeah. peers, the and they want to impress each other. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that yeah. makes a lot of sense. Now, you obviously have spent your career interviewing other people. What's it like when you go on a book tour like this and you're being interviewed? You always feel, well, you know, you, you feel lacking. <laughs> <laughs> you feel, I am so sorry, I'm not a you. Did you have star. any other beverages before coming on the show? This no. <laughs> I, was just, I was just checking. I was no, just checking. 32. <laughs> I mean, I was up late, maybe. Uh, but, uh, but, uh, no, no, uh, no. I, so you, I do feel you know, for the underwhelming. You always feel like, I wish I was somebody else or better. <laughs> well, yeah. you've said that your, um, one of your favorite questions to ask people is what they did in their first job and we found out that yours wa well no you tell us what your first job was well when I was in school I had a job I was getting a pound an hour that's how old I am and how long ago it was <laughs> um, it was a pound an hour and I was I think I was supposed to work in behind the counter in the store but I was so bad at that that I was at the back and I had to peel apples oh, for apple pies awesome. and it turns out I was very bad at that as well so uh, <laughs> if you were a vegetarian you shouldn't have eaten those pies. Oh. <laughs> there was, a, there was, a, they, they were just the, the apple slices were just in like, like murky, Todd. bloody water. It was like, yeah, they, it was like Sweeney Todd. There you go. Yeah. So your goal, one of your goals, is to get uh, Julia Roberts and Brad Pitt and or Brad Pitt on, yeah. on your show. What's the likelihood that that ends up happening? Well, you know season? what? Every time, you know, if, if I, I am doing interviews, people say, who would you like on the show? And, you know, the list gets shorter because we've been really lucky. We've had nearly everyone, but two of the ones that are still outstanding, Julia and Brad. And, I, you know, I hope... They're not going, never. I will never go on his show. Hopefully it's to do with they didn't have a movie out when we were on or they weren't in town when I was there. In Ocean's 15. Well, I'm gonna, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think I might be seeing Brad Pitt later this week. I'll put in a good word for you. If you could. <laughs> Thank you so much. Let's talk about the book, A Keeper. Where did you get the inspiration? Uh, a Keeper, it comes from a story my mother told me uh, years ago when I was a kid. Uh, the daughter of a friend of hers did what one of the characters in this book does, answers a personal ad. And, you know, there's something so brave about that sort of dating, where you're writing these letters, you don't really know who's out there, and then you arrange to meet. And the, the first kind of big twist in the book, uh, where the letters aren't quite what you thought they were, that comes from life. That happened to uh, my, my mother's friend's daughter. But then what happened to her was terrible. I turned it into kind of a, an entertainment. It's dark, it's a kind of gothic thing, but at the end, you hopefully there's enough... Uh, redemption and hope at the end that you don't close the book going, why did I, what, <laughs> what was that? Uh, so it, it's an entertainment, hopefully. And it takes place in Ireland. You say every Irish home has drama and scandal in it? I think so. I think there are things that happen. It's true. There are, it's true, isn't it? There are things, 
There are things that happen in this book that if it was set anywhere else, you'd go, really? But because it's in Ireland, you just go, mm-hmm, yep, that, that, that makes sense to me. No, and when I, you know, if I go out with my mother for a walk or a drive, every house we pass, something awful has happened in that house. <laughs> you know, they've been, you know, terrible diseases, awful <laughs> things, just terrible things have happened to them. Um, and I, you know, they were, backstage you were saying to me, what, what's the scandal in your family? And I was thinking, there's no scandal in my family. And then I realised, it's me. Oh, I'm yeah. the scandal in my family. <laughs> when they drive past our house, they're going, yeah, there's a gay television presenter. <laughs> he was brought up in that house. So, uh, yeah, it's me. I, I, am, I am my family scandal. You did the audio recording for the book. Oh, I did. And apparently you, it, was, it was difficult? It's mortifying. <laughs> it, it, because you, you kind of think, oh, you're going to read a book. That's fine. I'll read that out loud. But then people talk in the book. So you, have, you have to, to do the dialogue. You have to come up with voices. And you're going and you're thinking you're OK. And then you turn a page. You go, oh, no, this person talks now. <laughs> And there's only so many Irish accents. There are a lot of Irish accents. But if anyone from Ireland listens to the audio recording for this, it's weird. Like, people come from all over Ireland in this book. They're all in one little village, but they're from Northern Ireland, they're from Dublin, they're, yeah, everywhere. I have to use my full range. Well, you all can read A Keeper right now. It's in bookstores right now. Thank you so much. GMA fans, Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.